God has truly been good to us. And we ought to serve him like we love him. Amen. Are you there? Second chapter of the book of Matthew, chapter 2. We just want to lift up two verses this morning, and if you would stand with me as we read these two verses. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. Father our God, we come now to expound on your word. And Lord, we ask you to bless us now with your Holy Spirit. Hide me behind your cross and they see less of me and more of you. And oh God, speak through these lips and play the words you desire your people to hear. And as we stand on the wall of this gospel, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you go to your seat, I want to talk for a few minutes. If you will, be patient with me. From the subject, we come to worship him. Now, uh, I, I don't know about you, but there are those who come to church for ulterior motives. They, they have other purposes for being there. Some folk like to go just to be old-fashioned nosy. Some folk like to go to see who's looking like what. Some folk like to go, and, and the proof is in the pudding because a lot of folk don't go to church until Easter. When they can put on something brand new and want to show it off. You know, and there's some folk that come to church want to look like a flash a fashion plate every Sunday. But 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 that ought not to be your reason for coming. You ought to come to worship him. Uh worship. Him means opus di. The work of God which is carried out for its and, 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 and its own sake. Just worship him. Uh, when, when we try to worship for the sake of certain benefits that may be received, uh, the act uh, ceases to be worship. I mean, when you come to church thinking that if I go to church and God will bless me in a certain Way and I'll get this and I'll get that. that that's when you, you're taking what is supposed to be out. It's not that anymore. Uh, you, you just come to see what benefits that you can get from God. The, the, it just ceases to be worship. For then the, it attempts to be used as God's a means to something else. Yeah. We worship God purely for the sake of worshiping Him. I mean, you know, if you come in other, any other reason, then uh, you, 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 you just, you got the wrong idea about what worship is. Uh, first of all, worship is, is to give the conscience by the holiness, to quicken the conscience by the holiness of God. Secondly, uh, worship is to feed the mind with the truth of God. Thirdly, worship is to purge the imagination by the beauty of God. We can't see him, but we can imagine how beautiful he must be. I, I mean, who else could do what he has done? The colors that we see, the, the awesomeness of the universe and all of these things, the beauty of God is all in everything that we see or do. Uh, fourthly, uh, uh, we worship, worship is to open the heart to the love of God. Fifthly and finally, it is to devote the will uh, to the purpose of God. Everything that we do has a purpose. We come to worship Him. Worship is not a human invention. It's rather, uh, it, it is a divine offering. In other words, worship ought not to be something that you come to as an event. Uh, did you come for the experience or did you come for the event? Worship ought to be an experience. When you come into the house of worship, you ought to come and seeking and 
to expect the experience of the Holy Ghost. You ought to come expecting to be relieved of some of those pressures that you have wind up in all week long. And when you come in here, you're seeking God to relieve you of those things. And you see, worship is more than just coming here at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning or, or whatever. We, we fashion it to be, well, I'm going to church. I'm going to church. What are you going to church to do? What are you going to do? Well, I, I, I can imagine these three wise men, when they left home and they garnered up all of their belongings and started on a track, headed towards Jerusalem. I, I can imagine some of their kinfolk asking them, what are you going way over there to do? Since you live so far away, what are you going there to do? See, because uh, uh, regardless of what folk think, it took these wise men two whole years from when they first saw the star in the east to get to where Jesus was. Yeah. So don't y'all be fooled by all these nativity scenes that you see in folk yard thinking that the wise men came presenting Jesus' gifts around his baby bedside. No, 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 no. That, that, that's, that's not scripture. And it, is, it makes for a good scenery, but it's not true in scriptural sense. But, but these guys, I can imagine that their search for him started out at home and when they began to pack, somebody wanted to know, well, what are you going there for? What are you following this particular star for? And they said, well, we got to search for him. There was more than just one, so all three decided to journey together. And each one of them had different gifts bearing to give him. One had frankincense. The other one had gold. And the other one had some myrrh. And each one of them represented a certain thing. And that had certain properties and certain authority about them. The gold represented his uh, kingship. The frankincense represented his priesthood. The myrrh represented him his burial when he would die. Here's a babe that they had not seen and didn't even know, but just reading the stars led them on a search to find him. Have you been in search for Jesus for yourself today? That is the question. Are you in search of him? And if you are in search of him, have you found him yet? You, you got to know that you're going to run across a lot of obstacles that will come in your way. Yes. I'm sure that when these three men started out on their journey to find the baby Jesus, to find the new king of the Jews, they saw it in the stars. And when they started out, it took them, like I said, two years, and I'm sure that they ran into a lot of storms. See, you all think that when you come to Christ and when you sit down in the chair and you give your life to Jesus and you be baptized, that that's it. You, oh, well, I ain't got no more trouble. I got news for you. Your troubles have just started. Uh, you, you, you better wake up. You better look at something because when the devil, you out there in the world doing all that you think you've been in, the devil ain't bothering you because he got you. But as soon as you turn your life over and give it to Christ, you're going to run into some stuff. You're going to run into some storms. So if life is not going to present you a pathway to easy street, you got to go through some stuff when you become a Christian. Yeah. It's a fight all the way. And I'm sure that these three men ran into some sandstorm, some rainstorm, some snowstorm. Because I've been eight years, you know, they had two seasons of each. And I'm sure that they run into it now. The thing about what I like about them, that their journey was not deterred by the circumstances that they ran into. Y'all don't hear me. Uh, our Christian journeys sometimes are halted by whatever happens. Yeah. We look at things that come our way. Unemployment, sickness, all of these things will deter you from your journey. If you let them. But I heard Jesus said, in me, you have everything that you need. 
But you got to learn to depend on him. You see, they did not allow anything that happened to deter them from going to where Jesus was. They recognized one thing you got to do is recognize when he comes into your life. They recognize the fact that there is a king somewhere that is born that I got to pay homage to. And I'm going to continue my journey regardless of what come or what may happen. Ah, oh, the star in the east uh, was shining bright and led them to where Jesus was. But when they got to Jerusalem, they went in and they had a talk with some of the centurions. Can you, sir, tell us where we may find the king of the Jews, which is born? For we've seen his star in the east. No star. But I tell you, we ain't good. We got a king, but you need to go talk to him. So they sent him to Herod. And when Herod heard that, and he said, By what time did you see this? And they went on telling them about what they knew to be a fact was and, and where Christ should be born. He demanded them to tell him. So when they, they told him all of these things, and he told them, well, tell you what you do. You go search diligently. I don't know where this young child you're talking about is, but you go search for him, and when you find him, come back and tell me. <laughs> Look how God works. The guy went and said, we come to worship him. See, and, and we're not going to let anything deter us from worshiping this young king who was born and we saw his star and you want us to find him for you? He's right here under your nose and you didn't even know it? Oh, I'm telling you, when they left, they were happy. But the Bible let us know that when he sent them on to Bethlehem and told them to search for the young child and when they finally bring him word again that he may go and worship him. But see, he had another ulterior motive. And but the thing was that they followed the star. You got to follow something. And you might as well follow the word of God. When everything goes wrong. When people are trying to tell you if to do this and to do that. All you got to do is follow the instructions that are in these 66 books. It will get you on the right path. Yeah, when the when the all oh, these wise men, when they heard the king, uh, what he had to say, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east went on before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Don't you know this morning our star is still shining. We still have a star. It may not be in the east. It may not be in the west. It may not be in the north nor the south. But we have a star that's sitting on the right hand of God who is able to stand there for us when these brothers saw this young child, when they came into the house, they saw the young child with his mother Mary. They fell down, began to worship him, and when they opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and being one of God in a dream that they
once you come from there, if you're not part of the worship, here. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, here. Thank you. 